Sure, it's a pretty car, but should your taxpayer dollars go towards producing it? We asked Tesla CEO Elon Musk about one of the company's biggest controversies. The New York Times did this piece that everyone in Silicon Valley got very up in arms about, saying that, you know, that the government money going to Tesla would be this, you know, huge risk of capital that would only benefit the wealthy and venture capital backers who'd put money in the company and called the Roadster basically a $109,000 concept car. What do you say to that article? Randy Spross is a huge douchebag. <laughs> 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 and an idiot. <laughs> okay. First of all, what is he doing picking on an electric car company? I mean, it, why, why would he pick on the little guy who's trying to do good when you've got egregious wastes of money in the tens of billions occurring in, 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 in Detroit? What, why? Um, and uh, he, he actually he knew that we told him we're working on an electric smart. Okay, this technology is going into a mass market car. We're developing the, the, the sedan, which is half the price. Uh -huh. And even, you know, that's equivalent to a Ford Taurus $35,000 car. Right. We're getting there as fast as humanly possible. Right. He should understand, this is the idiot part, yeah. um, he should understand that when you have new technology, it takes time to optimize that new technology. New technology starts out at a high price point until you can get to, to economies of scale and to design optimizations. So effectively what he would be saying is like, if you, if you can't immediately make some new technology mass market affordable by anyone, you shouldn't do it. Right. And it shouldn't be supported. That's ridiculous. And how can somebody from Silicon Valley say that? Yeah. Well, a lot of people agreed with you. Yeah. <laughs> that came out. I mean, there, there was a, it was, I mean, the, the, there was a huge outpouring of, of uh, letters to the editor. Uh, and actually, I should point out, the New York Times printed a retraction. Oh, did they? Yeah. Well, of course, I mean, when they print retractions, it's like on page 27, right. like microfine. <laughs> They actually printed a retraction, yeah. Well, well, let's get to the issue of what exactly you guys do want from the government, because you balked at the word bailout earlier. No, but, okay, so there's two things. There's the bailout money, which was, was actually, that, that, that was what, what um, uh, GM and Chrysler needed to fund their ongoing operations, otherwise they would go bankrupt, okay? And that's what a bailout is. Um, so first of all, Tesla has gotten no money whatsoever from the government thus far, um, and uh, the money that, that was, was given to uh, uh, Jim and, and Chrysler, uh, the bailout money, which came from the TARP funds. Okay, there's a separate pool of capital which Congress actually. Uh, the, this legislation was written um, about. Was they started writing this legislation two years ago? It was finally uh, passed into law by the House and Senate. Uh, I think in November of last year, October or November of last year, uh, and that's 25 billion dollars in low interest loans for advanced technology vehicle manufacturing. Uh -huh. And it's intended to subsidize the cost of capital of the transition from gasoline to, to, to uh, high efficiency cars, particularly electric cars. Um, it's got nothing to do with the financial crisis. It was, this was something that was conceived and written before the financial crisis. Um, it, it, it's, it's something that was considered to be important for the environment and important for national security. There's been these reports that you guys tried to go out and raise another hundred million in capital and you couldn't do it in this market. Your competitor just raised 85 million, Fisker. I mean, is it that you can't raise the capital or is it that you just rather have the government money because it's a better deal for the company? Um, well, so a couple things there. Um, the, the hundred million we're trying to raise was summer of last year. So it's, we're talking almost a year ago. Um, and that's what we put on hold and basically raised 40 million of internal capital from existing investors, which was what was necessary to get the roads to the business, to reach cash flow positive, and to still continue to spend 10% of our resources on Model S development. Also, you know, the, the 85 million or whatever it was that, that uh, Fisker uh, says they've raised, um, it, that's, that's not enough to complete what their development, I, I would suspect. Um, and, and, and just as if we raised 100 million, that, that wouldn't be enough to complete uh, our development. Uh -huh. um, the Model S program is, is really close to a $400 million program, um, of which 350 would come from, from a DOE loan. And the thing is, the, the, the sources of capital that would normally provide that, such as the public markets, the debt markets, they're in shambles. So uh, the, the thing is, Tesla could raise that money. I believe we could raise that money down the road. But it would have to be after the public markets recover, after the debt markets recover, how long is that? That's anyone's guess. Uh, it's at least probably two years. Um, but I'm still confident we, we, we could do that. And when, 
when starting Tesla and funding Tesla, we, it was never with the expectation or intent of using government loans. Um, but in, in this environment, there's just not a lot of capital available. Right. Um, and, and you said you know, you're 99% sure you think you're going you're gonna to get it. Yeah, well, if you look at the criteria for the ATVM program, um, we are, I mean, you, you, if you substituted Tesla for com company, <laughs> it would be like a perfect fit. Uh -huh. I mean, they're, they're, we are the leader in energy efficient vehicles, um, and it's a $25 billion program. We're asking for $350 million of that, which is 1.5%. One and a half percent of this amount. It's again like, why the hell is Randy Strauss bugging us for a one and a half percent loan on a twenty-five billion dollar program? I'm like, how about why does he bug the guys that are getting the ninety-eight <laughs> percent? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, uh, so, I mean, the vast majority of that's going to go to Ford, GM, Chrysler. Maybe it'll go to a Nissan or a Mazda in, in, in part as well. Um, of, of all the people that money will go to, and it will, it will be released. It was appropriated by Congress. It was Congress's decision to do this, not some lobbying effort by us. Um, it will go out. You have to say, who will make the most efficient use of capital? Who is going to be the best steward of the taxpayer uh, dollars in that loan program? Who is most likely to repay it? Is it General Motors or Chrysler or, te or is it Tesla? Wh who has demonstrated a better, uh, a more efficient use of capital? I think it's unequivocally us. I mean, subjectively us. We will only the, the, all existing investors in Tesla, me or, or, or common stockholders, the employees, will only get paid back if we repay that entire loan to the government. Mm -hmm. So you have a huge incentive to do it, obviously. So what if you don't get that money? Do you have financial backups? Are the people who are you know here at this event who put deposits down on the Model S? What are the odds they're ever going to see that car in their driveway? I would say the odds of us getting that money are 99 percent. I'm extremely confident, damn close to 100 um, percent. You know, we, we, we can't say exactly what was transpired in, in the private meetings with the DOE, but suffice to say, I am extremely confident that we will get that and we will get it soon.